Hello and welcome back peeps. My name is Plenty of Zach and today is going to be a continuation from the last video that we talked about, which was how to get the most out of your microphone. Last video, we talked specifically about how to EQ for your voice and how to EQ with roll offs so you can kind of get rid of all that extra noise that you don't need. Today, we're going to be talking specifically about four different things. We're going to be talking about noise removal, talking about compression, gain, and vocal limiters. And we'll have a little bonus with the de in there as well. And these are the things that I use to try and get the most out of my microphone. So these techniques can be used to any microphone that you have. They don't have to be any expensive microphone or anything else. So this is kind of the power of using these. Now, as a reminder, we are using the Reaper plugins for everything that we're using today, other than one plugin that we'll get into later on with that bonus de tip. Once you have those Reaper plugins installed, let's go ahead and start with the first topic today, which is noise removal. So you wanna go ahead and make sure that you go down and add in a new VST2X plugin. Once you've done that, you can name it whatever you'd like. Mine is just called noise removal. Then go over to where the dropdown is at and you're gonna to wanna to be looking for the RE a FIR underscore standalone. Once you have that selected, go ahead and click the open plugin interface. Once you have this open, you're going to want to go down to mode and head down to subtract. And inside of subtract, you're going to see a red line up at zero dB. And you might see some moving yellow lines as I've had this tur filter turned off because you won't be able to hear me if it's on. The subtract mode is used to help get rid of any unwanted noise profiles in your microphone or your room or anything like that. And what we're going to want to actually do is you're going to click this automatically build noise profile button here. Once you've clicked it, don't talk. Try not to breathe into your microphone and, and have your room set up as if you're going to be streaming or recording or doing whatever you want with your content creation. This will give you the most accurate noise profile of the room as is or your baseline. Here's what mine looks like. So once you're done with those 30 seconds or so, you should now see a little red line that is down below here. So once you have actually built this profile, that's pretty much all you have to do to be able to remove the noise that's out there. That's what this filter is doing is it's finding where all that noise profile is at and it's just gonna attenuate them away to try and just get rid of them so they don't come through with any recording that you do. And that's it for noise removal. Now there's different ways you can do noise removal, but again, I'm just using Reaper as I found that this is a pretty light and non-intrusive way to get rid of some noise. Now usually the noise removal is always the first part of any audio chain that I typically run through. And in OBS on this filter side here, this is kind of like an audio chain. So it'll do things in order of operations as you have them here. So I usually always start with a noise removal to get my microphone as clean sounding as I can to then feed it into those EQs that we talked about last time for the main EQ and then the roll off. And then that helps clean it up to get us into the next part here, which is actually the multiband compressor. So for the multiband compressor, you're actually gonna be looking for the REA X comp dash standalone plugin. Once you have that up, go ahead and click open plugin interface. And now this is a multi-band compressor and it might look a little intimidating at times, but I promise it's not too wild here. The only thing that this is doing is it's looking at different frequency ranges, just like we talked about in the EQ video, where you have like your lows, that like nasal honk area, your highs. That's all that this is set up to do is it's looking at prescribed areas and going, hey, if any sound reaches over this threshold that we have set in here, we're just gonna uh, squish it all back down and make it a little bit softer. So the first band is looking from zero to 165.8 Hertz. That's what this top frequency here is. My second band is going from the 165.8 all the way up to 1147 hertz. Then it goes from 1147 to 69, nice 10. And then the last one goes from 6910 all the way up to the 24,000. So I set this up specifically for my voice, which I know that my low end is usually from about the zero to around the 200 range. Then from around, you know, 200 to 11 to 1200, that's kind of that boxiness. Then all the way up to that 6900 there, that's where all of like my high end frequencies are at, which is where some of like my presence and all that is into. And the rest of this is just all that high end sparkle that we kind of talked about in the last video with the EQs. Now, talking about the rest of the options that are in here, we start with threshold. The threshold is saying anytime we pass this particular loudness, I'm going to start trying to make it quieter. So anytime we get over, in this case, minus 21 dB, specifically in the range of zero to 165 hertz, it's going to try to compress that down. And so audio compression is making something louder, softer. It's reducing the dynamic range of the audio signal, which is good when you're streaming and you're talking. So when you're talking really softly like this versus if you're talking really loudly like this, typically the delivery to your audience is actually going to be pretty much the same perceived 
volume. To demonstrate what compression can do for you, I made a little sample here in Audition just to show you what it is, just so I can kind of repeat things and you can see the previews. And here you can see that I have peaks getting all the way up into like the negative one range right around where I have that selected there. And we can see some really quiet spots that are really soft down here into like maybe the minus 19. So let's, let's go ahead and listen to this and see what this sounds like without any compression. This is a test of what compression can do. And this is another test of what compression can do. Look how loud my voice is. So there we can see that during this really soft portion here, we're reaching about minus 19 decibels. And during this really loud section here, we're actually going all the way up into, you know, minus one to my, anywhere between minus three and minus one decibels. That's a very large difference. And when you're an when you're a viewer, you're not gonna be able to hear this really quiet section because the game or whatever else you're playing is gonna drown you out. And then during this loud section here, the audience can hear you, but you might be really overpowering to your game or whatever else you're using. So let's go ahead and add a compressor to this. And this is just a multiband compressor and see how it affects the signal. This is a test of what compression can do. And this is another test of what compression can do. Look how loud my voice is. So at its loudest point, my voice is sitting at about minus nine dB. And at the quietest, I'm still sitting at about minus 18. So we took a, a range of about 18 decibels and we shortened it down to about 10 decibels. Your attack is how quickly the compressor will turn on. And I find that a low attack for this about one millisecond is usually the best because that way your voice will never spike over top and then come lowered back down is that's kind of a, you want the compressor to kick on immediately as to not have that experience of basically it shoots up and then comes back down. And then for release, I typically find that 50 milliseconds works fine because as soon as I stop talking, then it just releases the compression and it lets everything go back. Past that, the only other things that I've ever changed was I turned off the auto makeup gain and then I applied a slight gain to this low end at two. And the only other gain that I changed was at this very high end here, all that high end sparkle from that 6900 all the way up. And I added three. Once I'm done with setting up my multiband compressor, then I go into what's called a single band compressor. And the single band is much easier to understand. So for this one here, all I'm going to be using is the REA comp dash standalone. So the multiband compressor is REA X. The single band is REA. Go ahead and open that up. So inside of this, we have very similar setup to what we actually had for the multiband compressor. We have attack, release, ratio, and threshold down in this lower left. Pre-comp is if you want to have this listening ahead so it always has your audio compressed, you can do that. But with today's technology, I find that again, one millisecond attack with a 50 millisecond release works very well for streaming and how this all kind of works in collaboration with your game sound and music sounds. Now a ratio for this one, I usually use a four to one. I want this one to be just slightly more aggressive and a four to one is typically an industry standard when it comes to compression. So that's what I've used. And then for compression, I had found that minus 21 works really well. So for me at my regular talking voice right now, you can see over here that I'm only just barely ever peeking into having to actually compress this down. But as soon as I start getting louder and more vigorous and maybe I'm starting to like really like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. So as I start getting louder and this compressor in conjunction with the multiband compressor is actually squishing everything down to you as a listener, my voice is gonna be much more leveled out. So that way you're not having to sit there riding the volume knob, trying to turn me up when I'm soft and trying to turn me down when I get loud. And then some final ones here, if you wanted to use the low pass and high pass filters that are built right into this compressor here, you can do that. But I find it better to just use it in the, the standard roll off EQs that we talked about in the last video. Let's step back to audition for a quick second here and let's take a look at the audio signal. So right now, right, we took that one peak from minus one and we brought it all the way down to about minus nine dB. And that's just with just the multiband compressor. Now let's add on top of this another compressor, which is that single band. And you can see here that now all of a sudden we've got a pretty flat audio signal in this lower section here compared to the top where you can see these large spikes in here down at the bottom. It's pretty leveled off. So let's go ahead and take a listen to this and see what this sounds like then. This is a test of what compression can do. And this is another test of what compression can do. Look how loud my voice is. So now right there, this quiet part, my voice is sitting at about minus 20. And when I'm really loud, my voice is sitting about minus 17. So now we only have about a two decibel difference versus what we started with, which was almost an 18 decibel difference. And this is the power of having compressors. But if you notice, after adding all this compression in, we really made our signal very quiet, you know, to the point where we're sitting at, you know, minus 20 to minus 17 dB. And that's where the next part of this audio chain comes in, which is the gain. Because we've made it so quiet, we have to add a gain back to this to make it louder. And this is kind of where I talk about the secret sauce. This is why I never clip when I'm streaming or when I'm screaming or anything else. Right now I'm using an 11.3 decibel boost because without this, if I turn this one off, now I'm coming down into here when I'm looking over at my OBS, without that gain boost in, 
you can see down over here that my voice is only coming in about minus 15. With that gain boost on, you can see now that my voice is coming all the way up to about that you know, minus, minus two, minus three section there. What happens when we get so loud that in fact we actually blow past what the compressors are able to compress our voice down with? Well, that's where the limiter comes into play. And a limiter is your final step in all this because the limiter is the last line of defense. You know, this is the wall at the castle type deal. This is if anything reaches this, this is immediately going to crush it down. And what a limiter is doing is you set a threshold and anything that go, tries to go over that threshold, it's going to just get crushed down, usually at, at a a ratio of like infinity to one. So it just blows it down as quick as it possibly can to keep it from clipping. Back into audition here, let's take a listen to what this sounds like with and without all the effects that we've applied so far to this little section over here. I'm gonna take off all the compressors and EQ and let's take a listen to the before and after and then I'll show you what the gain and limiter will do after we've finished here. So this is without anything. This is a test can do and this is another test of what compression can do look how loud my voice is and then here's with the compressors and eqs on this is a test of what compression can do and this is another test of what compression can do look how loud my voice is so right now it's just simply quiet so let's go ahead i'm going to apply the effect racks that we have to just this section here and then i'm going to make it louder and now let's listen to this again after it was made louder this is a test of what compression can do and this is another test of what compression can do look how loud my voice is so here you can hear me throughout the entire thing here you can even hear my whispering now and i don't clip that's the important part because if i push this up any higher to start clipping i'll lower this in post so that you don't actually like blow out your ears with this but this is what clipping sounds like this is a test of what compression can do and this is another test of what compression can do look how loud my voice is that's what clipping sounds like and that's why i said if you can do anything you can to avoid doing that that's probably the best thing to do so that's the main four things that i wanted to talk about today which was the noise removal the compression gain and limiter so as kind of a final takeaway here here's the overall chain of effects that i would use when trying to affect my microphone to sound as good as i can and this is exactly what i use every single time that i'm talking to all of you on stream or during my youtube videos here i have my noise removal first i do my main eq then i send that into the roll-offs i send all of that into the multi-band compressor i send all of that to the single band compressor after all of that is done i then apply a gain and then i put a limiter on this is what i have found that works very well for me and anybody that i've ever talked to has never had really a problem with how my voice has sounded through using these filters here feel free to play around with it because audio is very subjective but these are some of the tips that i have on trying to make your microphone phone sound literally as good as possible for completely free. So if you have any questions, please let me know down below as I know that audio can sometimes be a little bit of a difficult topic. So if you need more help with this, or if you have some additional questions about what I've covered in this video, or the last video, please let me know. I'll have the other video that I've done linked down below as well. I'd also like to take a second to thank my Patreons, Evgeny and Cedric. Thank you so much, both of you, for your continued support over on Patreon, as well as just being always amazing community members. I really do thank the both of you, and I really appreciate all that you've done for me, not even just with this, but also on helping me with just other things in general. You've both been seriously amazing people. So thank you so much. And to everybody else, I hope you all have an amazing day and I will see you as always in the next one. Till then, take care everybody. Love ya. Bye.